Welcome to the Sports Card Lessons Podcast. I'm your host, Big Ken. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on a streaming service, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. You'll be notified whenever I drop any new content. Welcome, and thanks for being here. Thank you uh, to everyone who reached out with condolences for Marley. Uh, definitely appreciated all that. Um, true story, I was so exhausted Sunday when I got home from uh, East Coast National and sat down to uh, record Monday's episode. Uh, I forgot to put this mic here in front of me uh, into position, and I uh, I recorded the uh, the whole 40-minute episode. Uh, I went to, uh, you know, get, get prepared to upload, and I realized that you could barely hear me. It sounded like I was talking across the room. Um, so I had to sit down and record the entire episode all over again. Um, I'm hoping you got the best version of it, but that was the second time, uh, in 118 episodes that I did that. And, uh, I, I, I hope there's not a third, I hope there will never be a third time that happens. Uh, but after I had a chance, you know, to get home, get some rest, uh, and really start thinking about, you know, the weekend, the East Coast National, and just digesting the weekend uh, and, and thinking about the episode, you know, that I put out Monday. Um, I realized I covered a ton of stuff, which was great, but I feel I left out the single most important takeaway from the weekend. And that is how strong the hobby is right now. What a difference one year makes in the hobby. Uh, last year, after the National uh, in Atlantic City, you know, you remember back there, wasn't that long ago, right? Card prices were dropping. Uh, dealers, including myself, you know, we weren't adjusting to the new comps and we were hoping they were going to rebound, that this was just a dip in the market and everything was going to come back and it was going to be, you know, as good as it was you know, just, just a week's earlier or a month earlier uh, at, the, at the National Atlantic City. Uh, and, and that didn't happen. East Coast National last year, it was a tough show. Uh, it was a tough show, uh, you know, for selling, I remember. Um, and I also remember being able to buy football because the prices seemed so good at the time. Uh, and, 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 you know, being a dealer that sets up, like for me, that sets up at a ton of shows, you know, I was happy to be buying, you know, these football cards under comps. Um, but the problem was the comps continued to fall even after that. Uh, and today I went back thinking about this episode. I went back to, to look at the episode that I did last year, uh, you know, right after East Coast National. Uh, and it was the, um, you know, East Coast National 2022 recap. The show was at Rockland Community College. I remember it being so hot, uh, extremely hot there. And I talked about, you know, the show being slow, uh, you know, just in general. But, you know, coming off uh, the National Atlantic City, which was, you know, unbelievably crowded and all of a sudden you you know you're still hyped up you're ready to go you know it's another show and uh yeah this was you know disappointing compared to you know what was that you know what happened in atlantic city and i remember dealers complaining about a lot of things you know sales sales were slow and and it was hot in there and you know when i'll tell you what is a dealer when you get to a show and 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 you know, sales are slow. Everything annoys you, right? It doesn't matter. You know, you could be, if you're selling everything in your table, it could be 105 degrees and you'd be like, yeah, it was hot in there, but I sold all my stuff, right? But you're not selling anything. You're like, man, it is so hot in here. I want to complain to somebody, right? Uh, but fast forward, you know, one year, uh, this show, um, this year, East Coast National was everything it wasn't the year before. Um, the hobby is definitely stronger this year. Um, sales were really good. There were great buying opportunities. Um, and nobody was complaining, right? Uh, maybe 
some of the guys downstairs because the heat downstairs. But besides that, you know, I, you know, I talked about this show and I talked about how well I felt it was put on and, and how well the promoters did and keeping foot traffic in there, uh, lines out the door and around the corner and around the building, you know, getting in there and, uh, you know, just Saturday was, I felt was overcrowded Saturday, Saturday morning, but you know, I, I, things could be worse, right? You, you could say, you know, who says you go to a show as a dealer and you say it was too crowded. Um, nobody, <laughs> no dealers ever say that, but you know, it, it, it was busy and it, and it was a good show. Um, everybody was talking about, you know, what a great show they had. Everyone in our booth was doing very well. The surrounding booths, I could see, you know, what was going on over there and, 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 it, and it looked very good, looked strong over there too. Um, so everybody came out of there with a positive experience, but when you sit back, you know, especially as a dealer and you sit back and I really get, you know, take a look at the show, especially coming out of Chicago, um, the national in Chicago and just weeks later going to, you know, the, the Westchester County center and, and seeing this show, uh, what a difference, what a difference it made last year. Now the year before, um, I, the year before I did not do East coast national. Um, so I don't have a, a, a third year, like a, a three year comparison. I only have a two year comparison on this. Um, but I know two years ago at this time, not at that show, but at shows in general at this time of year. Uh, and I remember not being able to get into that show. I did not, wasn't able to get table space there. I know, uh, uh, my guy, Rob sports card therapist, he did get a table or half a table. Somebody gave him a, you know, a showcase space at that table. So I knew of the show. I had, I had really for good firsthand information of the show, but in that general time, two years ago, setting up, um, no matter what you were putting in your case, you know, and for me, it was all prospects. Um, they sold and they sold fast. Um, I can remember doing shows, the last shows, uh, local shows. I did an Enfield show up here. Um, and I just remember no matter what you put in your case, it was selling. Um, and then last year, fast forward to last year, uh, the hobby seemed to reset, right? There, we had a major correction last year. Uh, so compared to two years ago to last year to this year, the hobby feels strong. You know, and I think it's not only strong, but it's stronger with better educated uh, buyers, collectors, flippers. I just think we're all more educated um, because I think a lot of us jumped back in two years ago. Uh, and I think we were we were learning. We were learning as we were going. Um, and for those of us who we're in it for all the right reasons. We stayed in it. And I, and a lot of people, a lot of people bailed on it. You know, it's easy. It was easy two years ago, um, to show up with a case and just put your cards in there and just people just can't, as long as your prices were reasonable, people just were coming by and buying all your cards. You didn't have to put that much work into it. Right. And then the people that were in the hobby that stayed, that had been in the hobby, they watched all us new people you know, start showing up and, uh, we were watching them, right. We were trying to learn from them. Like what else besides get these cards and put it, put them in our case. And the people that the veterans who were, had, had been in the hobby all along, they knew the bottom was going to drop out. They knew sooner or later and they sat back, they, you know, and I, I remember people saying this, I remember talking to people and, and people saying that all these people that are right here in the hobby, the, a lot of these people, as soon as, as soon as it drops a little, they're going to be gone. They're going to be off to do something else. They came from something else. They hopped in here because they knew it was lucrative. And then they moved right on uh, to something else. And I know a lot of people who I felt were like that, that jumped in and then jumped out and then came back in again. 
Um, and especially as a dealer, setting up as a dealer, you start to see the same familiar faces all the time. And then all of a sudden, I mean, you won't realize that you weren't seeing somebody that they kind of disappeared. And then, you know, six months, eight months, a year later, all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, where have you been? I said, I haven't seen you in so long. And they're, oh, we took some time off and, you know, I'm back. I, I put my cards away. I broke them by, back out again. I'm getting back into this. I, you know, I, I've got a new plan, a new game plan. I'm doing something new and, and, and just a lot of different things. So it's good to see some of those people that were in it come back in it and people like myself who jumped in and just, and just stayed there. All right. But think about, think about two years ago, right? I was selling prospecting dreams, right? Burroughs, Herberts, Josh Allen, Mac, Mac Jones, right? Trey Lance, Trevor Lawrence, just killing it, right? Quarterback after quarterback after quarterback. And somebody was prospecting somebody, right? There was not one quarterback out there that, you know, nobody, I don't even care if they were, you didn't even think they were going to start on a team. Somebody was still prospecting. Somebody had an idea. This guy's going to take off. I'm going to buy all their cards cheap and, 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 you know, do whatever, try to make a killing on it. And then a year ago, right? That was two years ago. A year, a year ago, I was losing money on prospecting dreams, right? I had all these cards. I was out buying all these cards. And even as the market was sliding uh, and declining, uh, I was buying all these cards. And, and you know, everybody knows, that, you know, I, I had a ton of Mac Jones. And, uh, you know, his, his prices dropped out just like all the other prices dropped out. And it came to a point where, right, if you're going to sell them, you're going to have to adjust your prices. And I think that's what happened to a lot of us is we sat on them. We kept our prices high. We said, hey, you know, hopefully they'll bounce back, but I don't want to let this go to loss. And then there just came a point like those, those, those prices from last year or for six months or eight months ago, they're just not coming back. Those prices are gone and they're not coming back. So then. We had to reset. Or I, I should say we. I'm going to say me. I'm going to put it on me because I know what I did. And I'm going to talk for me. I had to reset. You know, I had to just say, okay, we got to go back to zero. Let's take these cards. We're going to have to, you know, whatever, whatever. If there's going to be a loss on the card, there's going to be a loss. But if we're going to move the card, let's figure out what the current comp is on it. And let's move it and move that into something that, you know, it, it's it's money, money better spent. Right. So. Um, a year ago I was losing money on those and I sat on those cards and I lost, you know, I lost on a good amount of those cards, you know, present day, right. Fast forward to this year, you know, margins are tight, right? Profit percentages, they're lower. They're certainly lower than they were. Uh, and everybody wants to buy under comps. Everybody wants to buy under comps. And I know I, 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 I can hear so many people you know, saying the same thing is, is if everybody buys under comps sooner or later, those cards go to zero. So is that, that would, is that eventually what's going to happen? All these cards go to zero if we're all buying under comps. Um, because as a dealer, I have to buy well below comps, right? Because then I have to sell under comps too. So I need to win on the purchase end of it in order for it to make sense for me to to resell the cards. So whereas two a lot, you know, two years ago and last year, I was just buying a ton of cards because I just felt, you know, in my mind the two years ago, if you buy the, the right quarterback, didn't matter the card, that people were just gonna buy it. And then last year people said, Well, I want that quarterback, but I don't want all these crappy cards. I want these higher end cards. I don't want the lower end cards anymore. Um, and now fast forward to this year that there's certain cards people want, right? But they want them at the right price and pop counts on a lot of these cards. Cause these cards, the print runs are high. The pop counts are high and people, you know, I talked about this on many episodes, having, having the same cards that everybody else has in their, their case at a show sooner or later, somebody's, you know, they need the money. They're going to sell the card cheaper. Maybe they're into the card cheaper and they can move the card cheaper. Um, so 
as a dealer, I, I, I have to do really well on the purchase end of it just for it to make sense on the back end of it. Um, on Friday at this past East Coast National, uh, I bought a card. Uh, I bought a football card. I bought a Brock Purdy Silver Prism Auto. It was ungraded. Uh, from a gentleman who came to my table and I had said to him when I bought it, he goes, oh, you know, this is just an, what a great card this is. You know, as a dealer, you could sell this card quick. And I said, well, you're right. I can, but the price has to make sense. Um, and we made a deal and I bought the card. The only football card uh, that I purchased was shortly after that, I get a call from Rob, sports card therapist. He called me, you know, hey, how's the show? What's going on? And I said, you're never going to believe it. I just bought my first Brock Purdy card. <laughs> he was like, what? What are you doing? You're breaking your own rules. You've been talking about not to buy football. Why are you buying football in August? Right. And, uh, you know, I was I, we, we get on each other like that. It was funny. And uh, I said, you know. I was able to buy this card at a price that I knew I could move the card. I didn't know what I would get on it, but I knew I could make something on the card, right? And I knew, and I said to him, here's the difference. I, I bought the card at a good price, at a great price, that I know I can move in the next 24 hours. I'm not going to have this card past Saturday. I said, I may even sell it tonight, even though there's less than an hour left in this show. But I think, you know... I could probably move this card tomorrow. Um, you know, in, in the past, you know, knowing, knowing the comp on a card, when I bought the card, I could tell you what I was going to make on the card. Like pretty much if I got a card, like as I'm calculating in my head and I look at the comp and I look at the card and I make the offer to the person, I'm thinking in my head, if I buy this card now at this price, this is how much I can make on this card. And, and, and it's not 100%, but it's very, very close. So if this person comes back and says to me, no, I can't do that, but I could do this. Now I'm subtracting. Now, is it worth me to, to risk? Is, is, is it worth me to risk paying for that card to put it in my case because I, I know where I'm going to be on this card. And, and that's the difference now when I'm buying cards too. That's why I'm really... Uh, I don't seem to buy a lot of cards these days at, at card shows, even though there's good buying. Um, the numbers really need to make sense because I don't want to be stuck with car, you know, cards in my case, right? So the difference in in the past, I could figure that out, right? And and I'd be right on that, you know, on on that price point. Um, now it's different. Now it's just a buffer, right? Now it's just a buffer because I have no idea. So I say to myself, you know, when I bought this and I'm going to use this Brock Purdy card as an example, I knew there was a $125 buffer between the, the, the comp on the card and what I paid for it, right? That was the buffer, $125. Um, automatically, I know I'm starting at $100 or less, maybe even $90, because I know nobody's going to come up and say, because most people are going to buy this card to flip it, right? There, I don't know if there's many, you know, Brock Purdy collectors out there that someone comes up and says, oh, I want to buy this card. Uh, people are going to buy this card and either flip it or they're going to they're going to get it graded. It looks good enough to grade. They're going to get it graded and 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 and, you know, sell it. Now, if this was July or August and I thought I would have time to grade it, and I, I shouldn't say August, I should say June. If this was May or June and I acquired this card, I would think about grading it because it really did look gradable. But I'm so afraid now in this hobby at this time in August that I'm going to take this card and send it off to PSA and it could take four, five, six weeks and the season starts and Brock Purdy goes out and doesn't play well or re-injures his elbow or something bad happens. And then I, this card, I'm waiting for this card to come back from PSA and I'm watching my money, you know, the, the, the value of this card dropping. So I'm saying to myself, I got this $125, you know, buffer. I, I, my starting point is $100 of potential profit, right? But I'm not stuck to that. As long as I could make something on it, I'm happy because I'm really not doing much but 
but but but buying it and moving the card. Um, two years ago, on that card, my starting point would have been at 125, and I would have been going up from there. I would have said, "Hey, look, geez, let me try to make 150 on this card or 175 on this card. Let me try to put it over and and you know like ho- try to hold tight on that price." Um, and last year, right, I would have been firm. I would have been firm at 110 on this card and say, well, you know, it's $15 under comps. I'm giving you under comps, right? And then I would have been stuck with this card because I would have found out, you know, by the time I got to the next show, that that whole $100, that price had dropped on that card, right? So it's just over the years, I mean, you're learning, you know, learning, learning, learning. And now, you know, it's okay. It's okay for the margins to be lower. It's okay for everything to be lower because. As a dealer, I just think the consumer, the person out there buying, they're definitely just more educated and it, it gets harder and harder. And, and I think even that line too, between, between dealer and, and, and attendee at a show, I don't like calling them walkers. I, I, I just, I think of the walking dead when I refer to them as walkers, but walking a show, but the attendees at a show, um, and I've been talking to people and they've been saying to me, you know, I really did pretty well. Like people I know who set up at, you know, some of the shows, not all the shows where, you know, they're starting to say, I don't know if I'm going to set up much anymore. I'm just doing really well. I'm, I'm able to negotiate better on this side of the table where it used to be, you're able, you know, the, the, the dealer kind of had a little bit of an advantage and, you know, I think that advantage may be slipping away a little bit. Um, not for me. I'm very comfortable behind the table as a dealer, and that's where that's where I like to be. That's where I'm going to stay. But for some people, if they're they're finding, you know, they're getting out and 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 you know, getting better deals. Um, I had a card that I had. I was having difficulty selling. Um, getting I shouldn't say selling, just getting the price I want. And, uh, I think on Sunday, I finally, I let it go for, I, I still profited on it. Not where I thought I was going to be. And I was, and again, it was a football card and I was like, I, I really don't want to be holding much, much football after this show. So, um, I let the card go. I, I, I and I, it was a decent price. And, uh, I went walking around for like 15 minutes before the, before it was time to pack up on, on Sunday and the square, the booth right behind us. I walked over there. I look in the case and there's that card. I'm like, I started laughing. I said, I said, Oh, I just sold that card, you know, to the, he goes, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he came over here and sold it to me. And, and it was, it was $10 difference than what, I sold it to him for than what this dealer bought it, bought it for ten dollars. But for him, I, I mean, that ten dollars probably worked going from one table to the other. Uh, and then I thought to myself, could I, if I, if I walked around with those cards and started showing them the dealers, would I have a better, would I have a better opportunity of selling that card to dealers than the people coming to my table? But who knows? I, I mean, I don't know. It's just things that I think about in my mind. Um, and I do enjoy walking shows. I do walk, you know, a decent amount of shows, but not big shows and not crowded shows. That's those. I I I won't be walking those shows, um, but definitely still more comfortable behind the table than 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 walking around. And I think, you know, with with the consumer, the collector the flipper. I think everyone is just becoming sharper, uh, more educated. I think everything is tightening up on both sides of the table. But I think that just makes for a stronger hobby. Um, You could probably tell that a reset was coming when I was just explaining here two years ago, I was putting cards in my case and I was immediately knowing I was going to make over comps on that card, um, which, which turned into last year losing on cards, right? So that's the cycle. That's the cycle. Um, 
when things like that happen, when all of a sudden there's a big run up, there's going to be a rundown. And um, I think we're in a great place right now. I think, I think, uh, you know, as a dealer, as a collector uh, in this hobby, I, I think we're in a great place right now. And I'm, pr I'm pretty excited, you know, to see what, where we go from here. Um, if things stay the same, if they start to jump up a little, um, I mean, they could even j go down a little too, but I really don't, I, I mean, I'm hoping they don't, I don't expect that, but you know, some of the, uh, I went out, I saw, I saw my guy, Alex today, uh, from ideal cards, uh, and, uh, you know, him, him and Cliff, they run the, uh, the Enfield show and the Plainville show here in Connecticut. And, um, I asked him, how's, how's the shows going? He said, strong, strong. They're going strong. I mean, people are buying the shows. The shows are good. Lots of, you know, that's, they're, they're crowded and people are coming. Um, uh, and that's good. It's good to hear. It's good to hear. It just reminds me of, uh, you know, that I feel like I'm in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, I will be back Thursday with a brand new episode. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And if you like what you hear, please like, definitely subscribe. And most importantly, tell a friend and spread the word. Until next time, take care of yourselves and everyone around you.